Iranian officials say they will not back down from their controversial choice for United Nations ambassador. Last month, they named Hamid Abu Talibi to the post. Well, that triggered an onslaught of criticism from the United States. The U.S., in fact, denied Abu Talibi a visa because of his ties to the 1979 takeover of U.S. Embassy and the ensuing hostage crisis. For what now, I spoke to Michael Singh from the Washington Institute for Near East Policy, and I asked him if Iran needs to select a new nominee now. I think in this case, the United States really won't budge. I, I think that the United States Congress and also the president considers Abu Talibi a simply unacceptable choice to be uh, uh, a foreign ambassador in the United States, even though he's in New York mm -hmm. uh, at the UN. And, and I don't think that will change. So there's really only two options, which would be Iran chooses someone else, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is most likely, actually, mm -hmm. after maybe some time passes. Uh, or Iran simply goes without an ambassador of the United Nations. Or, but in fact, what that really means is you have a sort of acting ambassador. Whoever's the number two becomes de facto the number one. Do you think uh, Iran underestimated the kind of reaction it would get by picking Abu Talibi? I mean, clearly they knew this man maybe didn't have a tremendous role in the hostage crisis. But even he says, you know, I acted as a translator on a couple of occasions. Right. It's very puzzling, especially because we are in this period of diplomacy where relations between Iran and the United States are certainly not good, but perhaps mm -hmm. they're making progress. Uh, I think that uh, most people who are in the nuclear negotiations would say that they believe uh, President Rouhani wants a deal. So the question is, why choose this person who you could predict that he wouldn't be acceptable to the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, all I can imagine is that it was a miscalculation uh, on President Rouhani's part. Uh, either they weren't aware of this issue, which is somewhat hard to believe, given that this is a prominent issue in Iran, mm -hmm. um, or they simply didn't realize that it would be uh, such an issue in the United States. Did the United States perhaps blow things a little out of proportion? I mean, this man seems uh, to have a good resume on paper after the hostage crisis. He was Iran's ambassador to Belgium, the European Union, Italy, Australia. So is the U.S. perhaps making too much out of it, considering he was only a translator? You know, I don't think so. I think from the American perspective, no. Uh, the, the takeover of the U.S. Embassy in Tehran and the, the taking hostage of uh, dozens of American diplomats was a really egregious violation uh, of America's diplomatic rights. Uh, it was an act of terrorism in the view of the United States. And to have someone who was involved in that act when, in fact, the Iranians not only haven't apologized for what happened, but they continue to glorify the takeover of the embassy uh, is simply not anything any American president, I think, could allow. For President Obama as well, there's another angle, which is, uh, remember, he's engaged in this nuclear diplomacy with Iran. It's very delicate. There's a lot of critics at home and abroad in the region of what he's doing. And the perception that he somehow uh, were, would give a free pass to this type of person who is involved in the embassy takeover, I think would really deepen the criticism and skepticism of what, uh, what he's engaged in with the Iranians. So in a, in a sense, actually standing up to Iran on this issue may have strengthened President Obama's hand here at home and with allies in the region. So is it okay for United States every time they don't like an ambassador of a country for them to deny that person a visa? Does this set a dangerous precedent? Perhaps? Well, I don't think in this case it's a question of not liking him. It's mm -hmm. a question of this act which took place, which he participated in. Uh, and therefore, I think from the U.S. view, we would say this, isn't, this shouldn't be viewed as a precedent mm -hmm. by other countries who are seeking to send their envoys mm -hmm. to the United Nations. Uh, there obviously is a headquarters agreement between the U.N. and the United States which governs what we can and can't do, and President Obama and the Congress feel as though they're acting within that headquarters agreement mm -hmm. because, again, it's not that we don't like Abu Talibi uh, just for whatever reason. It's because of his involvement in this act of terrorism. Uh, so so I, I feel as though we shouldn't overinterpret the precedent here. Okay. And I have to ask you about the sensitive negotiations going on between Iran and the West. Do you see this whole debate and controversy perhaps impacting those very key and crucial negotiations? It's certainly possible. Uh, I think that uh, for, for President Rouhani, he wants a deal. Uh, and I think that he has, at least so far, and at least nominally, the support of Iran's supreme leader, mm -hmm. who is the ultimate decision maker. And I think that's because they want to get sanctions lifted from Iran. Uh, I don't know that this incident changes any of that calculation, although it certainly would be ammunition for hardliners who, for whatever reason, oppose the diplomacy. Although, frankly, we haven't actually seen too much of that uh, since this episode has mm -hmm. taken place. Mm -hmm. Um, 
And from, from the United States' perspective, I think the United States is keen that we deal with this Abu Talib issue separately and that it not impact the nuclear negotiations. Uh, and so, in a sense, both sides seem uh, willing to compartmentalize, as we might say, this issue from the nuclear negotiations. We shall see what happens. Michael Singh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you.